Coming up in the news, the Deputy Prime Minister among dignitaries welcoming U.S. Navy ship the USS Bainbridge. Also, a brawl outside a government agency under investigation. And on this Valentine's Day, we close out our Week of Love series. The Bahamas Tonight, the Northern Edition starts now. This is the Bahamas Tonight, Northern Edition. the Bahamas tonight, the Northern Edition. Good evening all, I'm Shashina Will Parkinson. As always, it is so great to have you with us. Topping the news, Grand Bahama welcoming the crew of the U.S. Navy ship Bainbridge. The vessel arriving on Grand Bahama a few days ago and since then, crew members have been volunteering with community projects throughout the island. Last night, a ceremony was held on board the vessel, celebrating the friendship between the Bahamas and our neighbors to the north. Jay Philippe was there. The special reception celebrating the friendship between the Bahamas and the United States was held on board the Navy ship, the U.S. Bainbridge, at the Freeport Harbor. An Ali Burke class guided missile destroyer vessel. The Bainbridge is perhaps best known for rescuing Captain Richard Phillips from a failed hijacking attempt of the U.S. flag freighter, the Maris Alabama, by Somali pirates in April 2009. The ship recently came to Grand Bahama Island following an eighth-month deployment from the Middle East where they provided security and forward presence for the United States led by Commander Catherine Devine. During our deployment, our sailors demonstrated their strength and resiliency, always ready to respond to our nation's call. Luckily, we were called again to come here to Freeport to help strengthen our partnership and support of the Bahamanian people. We feel privileged to serve our country and this, in this way and to have good friends like you. Our activities during our time in Freeport, from reading and interacting with school children, to painting classrooms, to playing some friendly games of hoops with the Royal bah Bahamas Defense Force, uh, demonstrate our support to our friends in the Bahamas who have also shown extraordinary resilience in the face of adversity. Thank you for your excellent hospitality and truly warm welcome for all of our crew. Chargé d'affaires at the U.S. Embassy, Stephanie Bowers, focusing on the bilateral relationship between the U.S. and the Bahamas. Even in the midst of hardship and tragedy and working closely together to rescue storm victims and begin the long, painful process of recovery, the United States and the Bahamas emerged with an even stronger friendship. I was pleased to tour Grand Bahama earlier today and see that much progress has been made, yet we all know that there is still a long road ahead. The United States continues to stand side by side with the Bahamas as recovery continues. As just one example, USAID has provided enough funding for Samaritan's Purse to continue its work, such as its water, sanitation, health and shelter programs well into 2020. Deputy Prime Minister, the Honorable K. Peter Turnquest welcoming the commander and her crew to Grand Bahamo with open arms, stressing appreciation for the U.S. government and the U.S. private sector for their commitment to Grand Bahama that extends well beyond Hurricane Dorian recovery efforts. I'm very excited to learn that the men and women of your command have had the opportunity to participate in some of the volunteer activities around our island. No doubt you would have seen that we still have a lot of recovery effort yet to go, that we still have a lot of destruction and relocation to address, but I trust in the face of the children that you saw hope and you saw possibilities. The welcome reception concluded with a traditional plaque exchange and evening colors. I'm Jay Philippe, ZNS Network News. Well, police called to disrupt a brawl that erupted outside a government agency today. And at the end of it all, a man was away, taken away by police. A violent attack at the National Insurance Building resulting in a brawl in the parking lot of that government complex. 
According to sources, a man entered the NIB office requesting to speak to an employee known to him who was not in the office at the time. The man who was reportedly acting in a belligerent manner confronted that person outside some time later. An altercation ensued, and while one employee was assaulted, a senior official was also punched in the face. Sources say other persons witnessing the matter intervened, and the altercation led to the parking lot. A video circulating on social media showed a group of people in that parking lot, followed by gunshots and a physical fight. Sources say police responded quickly to the incident and gunshots were fired reportedly by police to bring the situation under control. Reports say the attacker tried to escape by vehicle. He was stopped and his vehicle collided with another car in the NIB parking lot. That man is now in custody and is expected to be charged on Monday. Well, meantime, police are on the scene in Lewis Yard where the body of a male was discovered in his home. Our news team is working on that story at this hour. Switching gears now, the Grand Bahama Port Authority staging a workshop for local contractors. The goal to bring greater awareness to safer building codes on Grand Bahama. Chief Building Manager for the GBPA, Dudley Francis, and Shelter Sector Technical Coordinator, Dave Delgado, says that it's an imperative that contractors improve the building codes. The historical events of hurricanes that we have had since 2004 and uh, we recognize there were three common things uh, with most of these events. Uh, we had high velocity wind, um, we had storm surge in many cases uh, which, which of course deals with flooding and then in some cases we also had tornado. So some of the things that I was recommending to the contractors that they can employ would be just making slight modifications to ensure that as they build, these structures are more resilient against those three main types of failures. Some of the, um, the work that I'm going to be doing now is we're going to be having a workshop with the contractors to talk about different options on because there's many different things you can do to improve and strengthen your house. So different options and we're going to try and look at which ones are easy to do, which ones are a bit harder, more expensive, so we can try and identify the low-hanging fruit. So, as an example, if we were to use screws, roof screws, external roof screws, rather than plain shank nails, that's one easy way that we could try and improve uh, houses and roofs and make them stronger. Director of Building and Development Services at the Grand Bahama Port Authority, Nakira Welshcombe, says that this workshop is badly needed for current contractors employed in the construction field. We've been doing a series of contractors workshop from 2017 just to encourage that community to always look at new techniques, new technologies that they can incorporate in the building process. And so this workshop is fitting this evening as many are now repairing from Hurricane Dorian. And so the theme is building back better. And so that's something that we want to promote in our community now to encourage contractors to look at what they're doing, how they're doing, and to see what now they can incorporate into their building techniques to make you know the city more resilient against future hurricanes. In other news, the Bahamas Public Services Union elections may be months away, but one group is getting a head start on the campaign trail. The power team says their chief goal is to turn around declining membership. Running for the position of president on the power team is Alexander Burroughs Jr. He claims the current administration lacks leadership and offers poor leadership. He hopes to bring about change. We are people organizing with effective results, the power team. We have not only identified, but also assessed the many problems we are currently faced with. We want to rebuild the union. One of our mantra is, the ghetto be rebuilt, union strong. And we appeal to our members of the Bahamas Public Service Union and those who are not members to give us a try. Give the power team a try. Now elections are set for September and here's what he says a vote for the power team means. We pledge to repair our union's assets, 
minimize our union's liabilities, implement training programs for all members, that is leadership and effective communication, the labor college, union seminars, and both regional and international conferences. We pledge to dialogue with the government with the view of using the cost of living index to determine future general salary increases. Well, good evening all. How nice of you to join us. Now, I know it's been a long day and you're probably tired, but I hope you haven't forgotten about our dinner reservations tonight at Upstairs on the Bay Restaurant. Now, don't worry what you're going to eat because I've already ordered it for you. Stay tuned to see what we're having.